Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I first off want to thank you uh, for including H.R. 4228, uh, the DHS Acquisition Accountability and Efficiency Act, and today's full committee markup. This important legislation uh, is to save taxpayer dollars on DHS's largest purchases. Uh, this bill passed unanimously out of subcommittee last month. In addition to receiving support from Project Management Institute, Security Industry Association, Professional Services Council, and Business Executives for National Security, since last month's markup, we also received letters of support from the American Conservatives Union and IT Alliance, as well as one that came in this morning from Tech America. Um, the RAND Corporation also published an article on its website endorsing the bill as an important step to improving the department's management. And I ask unanimous consent uh, that these items be included in the record. Without objection, so ordered. I would also um, like to thank the, um, the members of the subcommittee, uh, specifically uh, the ranking member, Mr. Barber, who was a co-sponsor of the bill, for his uh, support and effort as we work through the process. Um, I'd like to note also, Mr. Chairman, that the Government Accountability Office uh, report that was done at my request and released publicly yesterday, it confirms the need for H.R. 228 in several ways. Uh, I'd like for this to be uh, concluded, included in the record. Um, Without objection, sir. Thank you. For example, the GAO found in this report that as of November 2013, DHS still lacked acquisition program baselines for 21 of the 46 programs. And as of December 2013, DHS only had only approved life cycle cost estimates for 20 of 80 major acquisition programs. Further, GAO found that DHS's largest, ac largest acquisition programs will likely experience schedule slips, cost growth, and uh, capability reductions in the coming years if the funding instability worsens. DHS must take action now or risk wasting more taxpayer dollars through mismanagement. GAO made nine recommendations for DHS action and many of those are required by HR 4228. The amendment in the nature of the substitute I'm offering today incorporates the changes made at the subcommittee markup. And I applaud the members on both sides who offered amendments during the committee markup, subcommittee markup to strengthen the bill. And uh, again, I appreciate the close collaboration I had with the ranking member and the other members uh, of the subcommittee. In addition, the uh, amendment nature of the substitute makes a few other changes. It adds a precision to the breach section on internal notifications of breaches within DHS and clarifies the time frames for when the department must notify Congress and provide subsequent reports and certification. It also requires in cases when the DHS secretary is notified of a breach that the inspector general is also notified. Also, these changes sharpen the breach notifications required in the bill. Uh, the amendment nature of the substitute also increased the role of deputy secretary, which is consistent with a recent memo from Secretary Johnson to increase collaboration and accountability. You know, over 11 years have passed since the creation of the department. As members of this committee, we have a duty to ensure that DHS effectively protects the nation while also spending taxpayer dollars wisely. As we are over $17 trillion in debt as a nation, the department must take steps to curb its spending, hold acquisition programs accountable, and increase transparency to Congress and this committee. This bill provides a clear framework to help DHS achieve these objectives, and I urge all of you to support H.R. 4228, and I yield back the balance of the time.